with applications in energy, in statistical learning, and also in um, operation management. Okay, so today we will be talking about the CCP selector, class of subselection for fast rate regression. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan, for the invitation. It's my great honor to present the work here. So this is joint work with my colleague from Department of Statistics from, from Genetech. So, all right, so this is outline. So first of all, I give you a brief introduction, and uh, so and then show you what's going on there, so what, what kind of new methodology you can propose, and propose several uh, approaches to solve model, and we'll demonstrate to you by numerical illustration, like how, how good the solution, the performance of the solution is. So I begin with, so, so forgive me, for those you are very familiar with this uh, regression model, I will give you a brief introduction. So essentially it's just the notations. So we have this Y the labels and this, this uh, data and data we have. So we also have some explanatory data. This, this can be obtained from, for real life. And this is the number of features, uh, vector features we have. We have so and, and suppose this data is noisy. Subject to some cause of noise. I but noise is a very standard assumption. So here we suppose this n you will see a lot in this talk, n is number of data points we have, and p is number of features. And the, the assumption here is uh, we might have many features in data. This this could be possible in a real life application, and uh, and and so I will show you later on. Oops. So what's, what's our goal? So this is a stati uh, so my <coughs> colleague is a statistician. They would like to do this kind of things. They want to estimate the true true regression in some some good way, right? To estimate the the, the the this this true regressors with with a very low interval, confident interval also have very high accuracy. And if you have new data coming, they want to some have very accurate sort of predictions. Okay. Those are this is just an overview. But what we can do, right? So once we give this model, so we can just use the ordinary least square there, we maximize the least square error, or we can do the maximum likelihood estimation, this give us essentially the same formula. And the nice result about this thing is, a, first of all, it's unbiased estimation. Okay, so once you solve this model, and so you take the gradient equal to zero, and this gives us a linear systems, and solve equation, and this gives us unbiased estimation. And, and it's common optimization, so it can be usually it's, uh, it's efficiently solvable. But but you might cause some numerical issue. So suppose there's more data points, you have more features than data points. So this means if you, you take the gradient, you will see this uh, linear equations, the linear inequality involved here, this can be undetermined. This means you have more variables then then the, the then the rows you have then to cause some numerical issues. So essentially you, you might not cause this uh, this automatic problem might have infinite number of solutions. Right. So which one should we choose? Okay. So to fix this type of uh, issue, the, the in statisticians they call they, they, they call the rigid regression, they put an ethical penalty here. So this penalty is not for the sparsity, but this penalty is just to make sure this problem is well defined. So in this case, uh, suddenly this problem becomes strong kind of optimization, and, and they have a unique solution, and everything good. And it uh, turns out that if, if we, by choosing lambda carefully, we can also reduce the variance of est estimation. Okay, it's a nice thing. But the, the bad point is uh, some cost we have to pay is that if lambda is very large, then this, this estimation give us is biased. So namely, it's a little bit deviated from true estimator. Something related to the lambda. So, but anyway, we can choose lambda is small enough. So this is really a trade-off by adding this. This is, this is called the rigid penalty or the quadratic function here. Essentially, it gives us a, a, you can solve the model in, in a nice form and have low variance. But again, you, 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 your cost is a little bias, biased. So, 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 so maybe you you can uh, <coughs> you can integrate this to our model, but you, you need to choose this uh, the parameter in some some smart way. So now we are focusing on rigid regression. And, uh, and the worst case, you can just choose lambda equal to zero or almost close to zero, you re recover the ordinary least square model. So that's why we're focusing on rigid regression. But this is not the, the end of the game. So what we are talk talking here is that uh, we would like to have a sparsity 
which, which means uh, features. It's a very long vector here, but we, we only need to select several features, which is most important, and maximize uh, all the, <coughs> for example, yeah, minimize the, the, all the information that we have, so all, minimize uh, the errors. So, so here, the, the, the key point I want to ask, question I want to ask is suppose only, only, uh, only very few key features can be selected, so how can we solve this one? Okay. So to, to formalize this problem as a mathematical form, so I put this, this additional concern here. This, this is L0 norm, it's not a norm, but it's just a concept of norm. It's a counting argument. We are counting non-zero element from this, this beta, the vector beta. Make sure that the, non, the number of non-zero elements is less than or equal to k. This, this enforces sparse, sparsity. So we don't want to make sh we don't want to put the beta in two the, 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 the non zero non zero element in this beta is too large. But suddenly this problem becomes very complicated. So this this is not a complex problem anymore and it's become non complex optimization. And uh, a long time ago, like twenty years ago, the, these researchers proved that this is a hard problem. Okay. But so now I deviate a little bit. So, so now you're focusing on the, we have sparse regression model here. So what kind of application we can have? For example, I will mention, I, I just briefly mentioned here is a, for example, this is, this is uh, this for, for like a, a cancer prediction. So you have a lot of, for example, diagnosis, diagnosis results. And you want to focus on genetic, the, the, the particular genes which, 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 which relate to some, some particular some some disease, okay. So you might have millions of genes. Right? If you go to the scientists, they have tons of genes. You can you can have different genes. So you, but they want to select the most influential, or most important genes related to this particular particular uh, disease like cancer. Okay? You have diagnosed results, and you want to focus on this kind of genes and which kind of genes influence this 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 diagnosis results the most. So. So in this case, they can narrow down their research only to the particular genes, so they can focus on research on there. Not the all, it's impossible to, for them to enumerate all different type of genes. And uh, another one is, for example, the compressed sensing. Sensing is a, you have a small data set, you have a large data set, you have lots of, lots of pictures, but it's, it's quite, quite, quite large. But you only need to, for example, only one to one have very, very small size of a very small size of picture, but essentially it's, can, it's almost the same as, as, as original. But this saves a lot of storage, memories. Okay. So now, how can we deal with this kind of model? You might look at this uh, uh, literature, so there's a long list of literature, literature on, on this, this type of method. So, so even even for now, there are still some some new new method methodology coming coming up. So so the, I just listed the three of them, which which are some benchmark of the <coughs> of of the research. So first of all, work for it's known as Lasso. So it's a very famous work. So what do they do is uh, they put this. They don't put the region regretter there. They don't need this. And then what they do is replace this L zero norm by L one norm. So convexified model. By doing convexification, there's a complex problem, but they still do not want to solve this model. So they, they want to make sure the problem is unconstrained, so they, they, they relax this congen with Lagrange multiplier and put it into the object function. So this becomes less so. And then, then the Lagrange multiplier becomes tuning parameter. So this is what the lasso is doing. And later on, this uh, Joe and Hasty in 2005 they, uh, so they do more than that. So instead of that, so they only have L1 penalty there, they put L2 penalty there. And they show that by doing this jointly, they have some, some, some benefits. So recently, some people, the lasso or this, this, this kind of uh, convex optimization method has some consistent problem that's identified in, in, in several years ago. So then later on, there are people trying to do the non complex optimization problem, for example, the exact method. I, I, will, I will show you later on, so how, how people attack this problem by using the, the exact method. So there's a lot of uh, things going on. So what, what, what do we propose? Okay. So first of all, 
we, we just, if, just if you look at this model, so only non convexity comes from this L0 norm, which means, but if you think about this L0 norm, what's, what's going on here is that we only want to choose k element of this, this, this vector beta. We want to only make sure k of them to be non-zero, the rest of them must be zero. So this is, has something like the, the, the two, uh, like valid k out of p is, uh, kind of stuff here. So what we can do is that we can form this as a transcondent. So this is all, 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 all the violation problem. So this is the, the, our uh, stochastic. Think about this uh, only type of constraint. So you have p different constraint here, and this con this inequality essentially tells us that you you can validate this conjunct by at the most k. You have p different constraint systems. You don't want to enforce all of them. I, otherwise, beta equals zero. Right. If you look at this one. Normal beta j less than equal to zero. This means if we enforce all of them, then this means beta equals zero. You don't want to enforce all of them, but instead you want to validate. You can you, you want to enforce that you can validate at most k of them. So this becomes a Chomsky gen problem. This is a, a essentially a Chomsky gen formulation, and each one has a scenario. You have p scenarios, and each scenario has an equal probability one of p. And this is the risk parameter is p, k over p, so we can scale by, by factor p, so this becomes this kind of constraint. Okay. But still, it's non convex. So if you look at this kind of formulation, what do you want to do is uh, we want to linearize this. We want to put this as a mathematical programming. Hopefully, it's a mixed integer convex optimization, so we can use solver to solve model. So what we can do is, uh, so this is typically. A typical way is we for in each of this indicator function, it's a step function. Okay, okay. Because this indicator function equal to one, then this equal to one, then this constraint is satisfied. Uh, satisfied. Otherwise, indicator function equal to zero. So it's a step function. You, you have a jump here. So to formulate this kind of function, we can introduce a, a binary variables for each indicator function. Okay. And then. We use big M method to enforce that the beta uh, uh, indeed can be zero if, if and only if uh, z equal to zero. If z equal to zero, this means beta must be equal to zero. If z is one, this means beta can be arbitrary. So this big M is uh, M should be large enough to make sure that this this conjunct is valid. Okay. So you're wondering how, how what kind of M we can choose. So it depends on the uh, it's, own, it's problem dependent. So it depends on how, how, and also, usually it's very difficult for us to choose it. So, so in our paper, we have some closed form solution for this M. That's very loose. And usually, so this means if you, this means our formulation, this is, again, this will become mixed integer kinds optimization problem or mixed integer conic programming optimization problem. So this formulation is very weak because it's a big M. But, yeah. Th this is not chance constraint anymore. This is a, a equivalent formulation for chance constraint. Ah, so you can show there is equivalence. Yes, this is okay. equivalent. So this very good. So this is a chance constraint formulation. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. But, yeah. But we linearize this. So this is this is usually what we are doing for chance constraint. If we have uh -huh. indicator function, you introduce a big M method, and this is one constraint. You want to make enforce the constraint by using big M method. This is what we are doing. So this become a, a mixed integer model. So now you can, at least in this model, you can store it into the solver and see what's going on. So, but this this performance of this model is indeed depends on the M. It's highly dependent on M, and it's a weak formulation because the continuous realization is quite quite bad. What is a weak formulation? What is a weak formulation? This, uh, the weak formulation means the continuous realization is far away from true optimal. So you have this. You have optimal object function value of suppose equal to some some arbitrary v star, mm -hmm. and this you have you can relax this z variable to be continuous. Uh, it's a continuous relaxation, so it's far far away from this v star. The true optimal value. So, so the branching algorithm is going to take a lot of time to converge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this this weak formulation really like hurts a lot in in, in solvers. So it takes much. This means usually what we are talking about a weak formulation means. Took a much longer time for the solver to converge. Okay. Yeah. 
So now the, the, so, so another, the, in this work from, from Transcendent Society, so we can bring in something, something from there by, by, doing, by using this, this, this uh, transcontent interpretation. So what we do is uh, for transcontent model, uh, because non has a problem, so we can do the inner approximation, we can replace this, uh, this transcontent by, for example, con the con conditional value risk approximation, which give us inner approximation means you have a big non-convex set. And this inner approximation gives us a, a small set which belongs to this uh, visible region and it's convex, okay? So, and it has been shown by Nemirovsky and Shapiro, they show that this is a conditional value risk is the tightest convex inner approximation we can have for, 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 for general chance conjecture model of, of indicators. But, but if you do like this, okay, do this again, continuous uh, uh, CY, this uh, continuous very risk approximation, you can see that you plug in here, and you do a little bit of math, you will see that it's leading to trivial solutions. Only possible solution for this uh, inner approximation of this uh, CY approximation is beta equals zero. So this, this, this says uh, this, it's, not, it's not hopeful if we do the convincing approximation, then that's what we can do. So what do we propose? So we will propose, uh, uh, we will not use a big M anymore. But we will we 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 exploit the model of this problem and, and propose big M free for formulations. And we show that this, uh, this, these two formulations are equivalent. And so, so based on these formulations, we can use, uh, uh, so again, those formulations can, can be solved in relative uh, maybe small size of proper instance. But for large scale problems, for example, we have 10,000 of features and 10,000 of data points. We really want to make sure our method works well. So, so now we use, uh, for those problems, we use greedy approach and, uh, and, and, and its counterpart is a randomized, uh, randomized algorithm. So we also each, each approach based on the formulations, correspond to different formulations. And we prove the approximation ratios to demonstrate the effectiveness of our, our proposal method. So what kind of formulation we can have? So again, we focus on this uh, region regression, and and this is the original form formula, and we have this zero non top zero zero non this 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 zero zero non constraint to emphasize to enforce uh, the sparsity. So what do we do is uh, for this mixed integer second order conic formulation, to, so essentially we don't want to we don't want to have big M because uh, first of all big M is, uh, is, uh, is uh, you need to you need to add extra work to compute this big M. Other things is uh, this big M is the model is really depends on the how you choose this big M. So we want to get rid of that. So what do we do? We go this uh, extended formulation. So what do we here is that for each indicator we have, okay, here for each indicator function, we introduce a binary variable z. So this is like what we are doing for the big for the big M method. But we do more things here is for each quadratic beta square. Let's introduce a, a, a new variable mu j. And, and that is quadratic less than the mu j. So this is essentially become equivalent formation. So namely, if you can, you can, you can, because you minimize over mu j, so this is essentially just replace mu j by beta j, and you can also replace the z j by this indicated function, to just become in the equivalent formation. So the advantage of this formation, we can show that, so we talk about the convex hole. So essentially, we can show that the convex hole of this guy is, can be described by this original these variables. Is we don't need to introduce more variable anymore. We don't need to introduce any additional variables. And the convex hull of this, this congenital system can be described by those variables. To see how, so, so we'll, I, I will only show this case. 
So we only focusing on this con this congen, the, the, the the last three congen. This the first, this one, this one, this one. We are focusing on this congen. And we use WG denotes the con those con those the last last three congen. And we can show that the convex by using a, a, a perspective formulation, we can show that this convex code can be described by this conic set. So this is a, a second order conic set. And uh, here, what we do is we just use z times mu, and put them together, and then replace zj, the binary of zj by the continuous, continuous, then we end up with its convex or description. It's a very concise formulation. So now we get rid of this non convex indicator function here. So we, if we throw this, uh, so you can also still throw back this convex code by this, replace the convex code by this formulation, so we end up with uh, this conic formulation. So now, let's go on. Now we get rid of the indicator function. This becomes a, a, a conic formulation mixed into your second order conic formulation, and you can directly store in the, in the solver, and the solver can handle that. And the nice thing about this is that uh, there's no big M going on. Okay. And uh, moreover, you was, you might wondering like, how good this is. So so now we can still show that this is unprovable because the convex hole of this feasible region is equal to continuous continuation. So this indeed is the best we can do. So if you want to improve this formation, you have to go go to this quadratic terms. First, quadratic terms and, and maybe explore more things from there. But if we only focus on the congen system, this is the best we can do. Okay, so this big M3 and the ULC, C, and we will show you in the computational study this formation might work well in some case. Okay, so we so we want to compare our method with a, with a, with another one proposed by literature, and we show that uh, put. We show that both are formulation equivalent. So what what do people do for this convex integer program? So they they do like they do this kind of two stage two stage for, uh, fashion. So what do, first of all they, they want to, first of all they find out a, a subset of features. Okay. And this beta s is just a, the, the the features correspond to those subset. And then they maximize the subset. So this become equivalent formulation. So for in the max so so so. So here, so for index minimization problem, it becomes a regular rigid regression problem. You just focusing on these, these subset of these features, okay? And you minimize this, this terms, and will give us the, the you minimize give this terms will give us the, the, the one object function, and then you find out the best is best subset, best feature. Subset of features of the system. So for, for this minimization, in the minimization, the nice thing about this is that we have the closed form, closed form solution. So we have closed form expression of the object function here. So it's come, it becomes a lambda times y transpose times a lambda n times i n plus this uh, this uh, this uh, summation of a bunch of rank one matrix, the inverse times one. So here. So this is the reason I, I use a rigid regression. So the reason is because here, if lambda equal to zero, then this term does not make any sense because this inverse, it's an n by n matrix, but you have only k at most k summation k rank one matrix. So so this inverse is not well defined. So, but if you put a, a little bit of lambda there, then this 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 expression makes sense. So that's the reason I use rigid regression, but always we can choose a lambda as small as possible. That's not there. Slightly bigger than zero is sufficient. So, so now what do we do? So now this original problem becomes a combinatorial problem. You want to subset, select a subset of features, uh, maximize, which minimize this object function. The inner minimization problem becomes this object function right? about this function. But, but it's a combinatorial, but we can we can we can form it as a, as a mathematic programming by introduce binary variables for each for, again for each feature we use a binary variables zero uh, they g to denote whether we choose it or not so now this uh, this this one can be formed as a as a, as a summation binary variables times rank one matrix 
and now we, this becomes a, a convex integer program. So this is this is a convex in Z, and we can we can show that this is convex. Essentially, it's not convex; it's strong convex in Z, and the, and and Z is binary variables, so it's a convex integer program. But the number yes. of subsets is exponentially large. Yes. So you have an expression number of uh, binary variables. No, because uh, this is exponential number. So you are choosing all these exponential number for this subset, but but for for each element of the set, set, you can define binary variables. Which the element of the subset. Yeah. Okay. So, it's, so this, so you only need like a, a p binary variables, right? So indicate uh, which steps that we are choosing. And the summation of this, this, this equation essentially tell, tell us that which steps that we are choosing. Right? Okay. Yeah. So we have this uh, equivalent formulation. So the number of variables is in order in equal to p. So, so this this formulation has been observed by Don in, in 2016, and then the, the, the researchers in, from MIT they, they also use this for the for the branch cut algorithms. This formulation because you cannot throw this formula to the globe. They cannot take it because. It's, it's, it's not a quadratic or it's not a linear. It's a, it's non it's non linear, so they cannot take that. So, but 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 what they do is essentially each time we can just uh, underestimate this function by using gradient inequalities. Just adding in gradient inequalities uh, sequentially, then you can solve this model. But you will see that it, right, if you even to compute this object function value, you need to you need to divide. You need to do this inverse. The matrix inverse inversion, which is a n times n matrix inverse, so this is very uh, costly. So, the, 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 and that's that's the reason. So, we show that the branch cut in, in, in practice might not work well in our new, in our data set. Okay. So, what do we do is uh, we can show more than that. We can show this convex integer optimization. Integer formulation for this region regression problem is equivalent to our MISLCP form formula. So I say these two formulations are equivalent. Uh, means uh, their continuation are same. Because uh, if you focus your binary variables, they always the same. They always you will, they will always choose the same binary variables, same same subsets, same optimal solutions. So. So equivalence really means that continuation are equal to each other. Okay. So this means we relax the variable for this uh, convex integer problem. Problem is continuation just relax binary variables to be continuous. And for MISOCP, we also relax this binary variable to be continuous. And we show that those two formulations are equivalent. The relaxations are equal to each other. They have same relaxation problem. Okay. So so the the derive is we use the the we, we, we this is a nice observation from this uh, this uh, these statistician. They have nice observation show that this this formulation can be formulated in SOCP this this model, and we introduce a lot of uh, auxiliary like introduce a lot of extended in extended space. We have more variable in additional variables to introduce to formulate this problem as a <coughs> SOCP second order conic program. And by projecting out those variables, you will end up with our formulation. Yes. You have a question? Okay, sorry. So what do we do? Here is a so you don't need to, to like derive the very very expensive uh, gradient inequalities uh, to underestimate this, this underestimate uh, or this class class function. So you can just use the solver to solve this conic program because they have same continuous association bond, namely in the root node of branch bond tree, they will be same. So now you don't need to each, 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 you don't need to use callback functions, so you can use the, the, the Groby, there are other features to solve a model. So, so we'll show that indeed this model works better than the branch cut algorithm because of the equivalence fee. But still, if you solve this uh, MISOCP, the mixed integer second order conic program, 
still that long way still cannot solve large scale problems. It take, still takes a much much longer time to, to find the, the good quality solutions. So that's why the motivator is to, to use uh, you know, some prosecution algorithms uh, which works uh, pretty well in practice. So, so here we use greedy algorithms. So this this is very easy things to try. So usually if you have very hard problems, combinatorial or integer program, and uh, you want to deal with a large scale, so you, ha you really don't know what can be, can be done. So this is greedy the easiest thing you can try. So it's easy, right? So like you, you just choose it's like center's problem. So each time that you have you pick the, the your favorite candy and then eat it, the next second time you pick your second favorite candy and do it. So it's like you, so on and so forth until you reach the you, because you, you think it's enough. So it's very easy to, to implement and it works very well in practice. And I will show you later on in numerical study this works the best, even better than my least integer second order conic program. So now how to do implementation, it's, a, it's a kind of easy. So your start is empty, right? You, you don't pick anything, right? You want to pick a candy. So what do you do is you, you pick a candy which minimize the, the, because we are trying to solve automatic minimization problem, minimize the, the marginal improvements of the, the, the improvements of object function. So, so for example, this candy uh, satisfy you most at this time, so just pick this candy. And for the second one, because this candy is already chosen, you choose your second favorite one. And you still, again, right, which give you the best, the best marginal, mar marginal benefits, the best marginal benefits so far. And you keep on doing this, and then until you reach maybe K features that you start. So this is very efficient algorithm, and, uh, and you, but, but you need to be careful so this is implementation. <coughs> so here, each time you need to, you don't need to, you you, you look at this, you, you might wonder, right? you want to, you, you might need to compute this inverse again and again, which is very costly. So the inverse is not not cheap, it's very expensive. The computational complexity of this inverse is all the n cube, n is number data points. So it's very computationally expensive. So we don't want to do that. And in the beginning, the first version of my code, I just use this uh, just naive implementation. So I implement all this uh, inverse, and and because it really works well, so I'm happy enough. But then we test the large scale data, then it takes forever. We cannot we cannot get 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 the result get get the solution done within maybe within an hour, maybe two hours. We cannot do this. So now we look at this formula. You see. What's the difference here is that you only here in this AS, this current best set you, you have been select. You only the difference only have one more rank one matrix. So what you can do, you can just use rank one as update. Okay. So, so this is a Sherman Morrison formula tell us that this this difference can be computed in this by doing this. So in this case, you don't need to compute this inverse again. You just use the previous inverse. And you can compute their difference. This saves you some complexity. And you can do much better than that. Indeed, you don't need to compute this for, for in, any inverse in, 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 your, in our code. In the best way, you don't need to compute all of these inverse. Instead, you just keep track of these tables. These are data you, you have. So even think of this uh, table here. These are tables, uh, table of data you have. So each time, whenever you select new features and update those tables sequentially, then you, you 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 just use those you just look at this guys right if you want to co compute this guy if you have a table of those na data you just use y times this table and this give us uh, this 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 results and you if these results just uh, access from just code code from table right you just you, you look at this one and you you find out in some table you got this value just access from table okay. and this value is also can be accessed from table. By doing so, you don't need to compute the inverse anymore. So this is very, very efficient. So my computer is not there. So I can show you. So if we have 5,000 5, data points, 5,000 features, this if you do like this way, it took you like 20 seconds to do that. It's very, very fast. So the original version taken maybe more than, more than two hours, but now we reduce this to 20 seconds by doing this kind of smart way. 
So we don't we don't do the inverse here. We just keep track of all these values. Each time you, whenever you see this value, just update update your, your results. Okay. So this is some uh, theoretical uh, theoretical results. So how good? So you want to understand so numerically it works very well, but theoretically what can be can be done? So we want to understand so what's going on what's going on the why this greedy works so well so now we, we go back to this uh, long like uh, 11 years ago the, the famous paper from fam famous paper from Kenneth and Terence Powell focusing on the, the, the density selector and they define this kind of uh, 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 constant like called theta s they call the restricted iso isometric property so they, they assume this theta s is less than equal to 2 it's constant this is like the, this is the largest singular value of x s times the x transpose, and you select the best, best s. Okay. But but we don't we don't we don't assume this is, this is theta s less than equal to zero. We just say this is the constant, and we can show that if n times lambda. So now lambda plays we kicks in here. Because we don't want to make sure lambda, we want to make sure lambda is small, slightly larger than zero. So, so if if this condition holds, and we can show we have this additive error, okay? This we start the true optimal solution, optimal value, and this VG is greedy. We know greedy is a feasible solution to V star, so this this inequality always hold. But for this inequality, you need to, a little bit more more work to do that. So we do we use uh, we first of all. Approximate this, uh, this, this object function by using uh, Taylor series and then do induction to prove this result. So some interpretation here is uh, if you look at this guy, so you know we know this uh, why this guy this uh, data think about this this data we can always normalize. So this this term essentially when n is going to this term can be a constant when n goes to infinity. So because uh, these labels uh, can be always normalized by factor. So, so this is a constant. Then in this case, uh, asymptotically, if if n go to if if n lambda go to infinity, then then if, if n go to infinity, then we can show that uh, this this term vanish. So 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 this this shows that uh, asymptotically this greedy solution can be optimal. They can achieve this same object function as a V star. When data points grows, uh, this is also observed in, in our numerical study. This means the number of data points grows, the greedy has better performance. This also makes sense. If you have more and more data coming in, the results should make more sense. And uh, and we also try this uh, randomized rounding because we want to use utilize uh, uh, even though the, the the mixed integer second order conic formation. Uh, it's not work very well in practice for large scales, but the continuous realization might be easy to solve. It, because uh, it's only a second order counting program, it's a special case of convex program. So suppose we can solve this uh, to automatically. So we want to utilize this, uh, this, these results, this, this continuous realization results. So, so what we can do is, uh, uh, which give us uh, some sparsity. So we can choose. So usually this z, the most of z is at zero. If you solve this continuation, most of z only maybe a couple of z is not zero. So for those are not zero, you choose, you you put this d the continuation for each feature. Just think about the probability of, of, of this feature chosen or not. Okay. For for so so we go this like the, the one shot. So for each feature, we we just run a flip a coin and success of a coin equal to z j hat. This is the continuation value. So this is a very easy algorithm. So you just for each feature, you have to be chosen with the probability z j hat. So this is a Bernoulli random variable. Each time you just flip a coin for each feature, and then you select it with this probability. Okay. And so if z j is very large, you will highly likely you will choose this feature. If z j is very small, you will not highly unlikely choose this feature. Okay. So this gives us this by criteria of approximation. So. Because we don't enforce this uh, kinetic condition strictly, so think about this here. Each, we pick these features. We don't we don't stop when we reach k so, to have these results. So so we have this uh, we have this. Uh, so we might you might choose more than k or might choose less than k. Okay. 
so, you, so but this factor controlled by the, the, the square root of k. So when k is slightly larger, then this term is almost equal to one. This term vanish. And we have one plus epsilon approximation, one if the n times alpha in some in the, in some in some some range. So this tells us that uh, the, 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 the continuous relaxation might give us a bad, some good solution if lambda, again, lambda n times lambda is large enough, and if k is, uh, is also very large. Okay. And this is, random, this, is, this is our result for randomized surrounding procedure. And this is, uh, and by utilizing the, the, the continuous relaxation of, of the conic program. And always the, the result holds if and only if we have the larger larger k here. So, so because it controls the error term here. So, so some some questions if you, you, you are interested in this result, then this is also the, so this is this is approximation ratio. So we. Be sure that this uh, so result is slightly better than what we have for the greedy. But greedy works the best. You will see this in the micro study. But but again, this is this this is some some some. It's a, this algorithm is a little bit problematic because it's not single criteria. Because we, you might choose by doing do this, this procedure, you might choose more than k element p features. Okay, this might be problematic, and. Uh, so maybe you would like to design some, some better randomized algorithms and have some single criteria approximation. Okay, so we, we, we would like to get rid of this constant here. Just want to enforce this subset less than k strictly. This is our goal, because we don't want to violate it. We want to choose too many features. Okay. And this is some, some open questions, and we don't so far we don't know how to do that. But I, so, so, so hopefully, at some point, we can we can get 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 it. So now, finally, we do this numerical illustration. So in the in our paper, we try a much larger instance. But here, I think this this is, these are instances I will report here. So we choose lambda very small to become 0 0.008, so quite small spectrum. But it's enough for us to guarantee lot of good results. And we we try different. Uh, different data points, 500, 100, and 500, and we fix the number of features equal to 1,000, 1,000, 5,000. And K, K is a sparsity, of how many these features you want to select. So equal to 10, 20, 30, it's not very large, so I want to enforce it. And uh, since uh, my colleague who is a statistician, so if he want to, 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 to see if like, this, these uh, results are statistically meaningful, so we repeat all the settings in five times, and we see that all the results are very consistent. So I, I just report the mean there. So I will use a Python to, and to call Groby to solve this integer coming programming or to, to run the branch cut out. So now this, uh, this is the solution time of this, these results. So we try this. Uh, branch cut this is for the convex integer model, we try this. And for some case, if number data points are very large, it's out of memory because it involves it involves the, 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 the in, in, inverse of n times n matrix and this is out of memory in my in my computer. So so we can we, get, we cannot get anything here for this instance when n is very large. And for MISOCP, the mixed integer second order conic so usually it takes a very long time to, to, to solve the optimal solution, to get the optimal solution. So in, so, so in this case, it's almost so time limited an hour. So the, in most of the cases, it's around the, around the, around the time limits. And uh, look at our greedy. So it took some maybe uh, within three seconds or four seconds. Okay. We run it very quickly, so without, without any effort. And random model, randomized surroundings really take so the, 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 the rounding procedure doesn't take any time. But the, all the time takes cost of, is from, from rounding the, the, to compute the continuation bound. So, so we use Groby to compute the continuation bound, which, which seems to take longer time than what we, what we expect. But it's longer than the greedy time. 
and you also this is automatic as you can see. So for many cases, for many cases, we can see that, uh, for example, the group, the the the, 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 the for example, this is a, the the orange one is a, the greedy solution. It's always below this, all the others. So we how to so to compute the automatic gap we use the continuous regression. We use the best low bound from output from group. Okay. Use the best low bound because and each one gives us the out, a feasible solution. The grid gives us feasible solution. And my SOCP also gives us feasible solution. And so I'm computing this uh, the best bound by using the, the best low bound from 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 solver. So we can see consistently our grid works the best. So the gap is uh, for for this grid uh, the gap is less than. Five percent, and the French cut it. Uh, oh. So, French cut did not take uh, doing very well because uh, because it's uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's slowing down because to compute the gradient inequalities each time, and uh, and my SOCP you see that it's, uh, it's doing much better than this uh, French cut because. Uh, we prove that they are equivalent at the root node and the branch. So solvers are doing much better if we, we, we use some features from solver which can can, can help us to the, uh, obtain a better quality solutions. Okay. So another one is from statistics. So we want to see the force alarm rate. So, so so we know the under so we use simulation data. So we know on the ground truth we have for example for. We know how many fe right features. We want to see, can we identify all of those features or not? So these are best solution we find from from solver, for example, or from uh, randomized algorithms, or from branch cut, or from greedy. So you see, this false alarm rate is low. This means uh, the solution is best because you don't. This means the the, 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 the just the wrong features you have picked. So this percentage is, for, for greedy is quite low. So, all, so again, uh, is the best among all the others. So not, not in terms of computational time automatic gap, but also for this uh, false alarm rate, the accuracy of the grid is, is even better than the other methods. And you, you will see, you want to observe this monotonicity pattern here. This is because uh, here from case five to case six, we increase the uh, sample size. So the when data, data grows, number Sample size grows, number of data points grows, then we have better uh, estimation. Okay. We can pick the, the, the force around the jobs. This means the accuracy increase. So this is consistent with our proof, right? For, for when data points grows, we really have more, we, we really can, have, can, can do much better. So this is here, we have 500 data points. Here we have thousand data points. Here we have five thousand data points. So, so this is really like the accuracy increase. But even for five hundred data points, we are doing much better than the other methods. So this concludes my, my talk. So first of all, we do this sparse regression and prove we propose new formulations. And those new formulation works better than the, the for example, so, so for this uh, branch cut algorithms. Also inspire us to develop a, a new new uh, approximation algorithms. So we, we we efficiently implement this greedy algorithms and which works the best. And we also prove some performance guarantees for these both methods. And uh, we demonstrate that the greedy works the best uh, from in the micro step. So in case you are interested in this research, there are some some open questions uh, might. Which, which might be worse to try. So first of all, is uh, how can we improve this greedy algorithms? The, the results are not very, very, very desirable. We can do much better. I, I, I hope so. So because uh, because uh, when we have evidence from numerical study, the greedy works really fast. So so how can we improve this results, the approximation results? So the, the, you might try some other method to improve this results and then prove the more more theoretical results. So this reason, this I don't know, and also for randomized rounding, you might also want to improve this 
you really want to na narrow to the single criteria approximation. We don't want to, because it's uh, hard for us, you need to have some starting criteria. You don't, you don't want to choose too many features. But this randomized rounding, you might choose too many features. Okay. And for other generalized linear regression, you can attend that. So, so for example, if we focus here on this, not, uh, not the, for example, the classification labels become binary. This become classification, classification problem. So you might want to focus on, uh, you still want to just focus on classification, minimize classification error. On the other hand, want to select the best of, uh, subset of features as well. So how to implement the, the gradient there, we don't know. So it uh, seems it's a non, highly non-trivial to, to, to extend our result to, to other, other, other regression models. So the, the reason is because here we use a closed form solution for this rigid regression. But here we don't know, we don't have it. Here for these different models, we don't have that. And uh, which also gives us uh, difficulty to investigate the performance guarantees. Okay. So these are all I have. So thank you for your attention. We have several minutes for questions. If there are any questions. So just, uh, well, I have a comment about the rich regression. So Tikhonov studied in 1943. Okay. You have a reference from 1975. Yeah. yeah so, so it's uh, more so, than that. Okay. Yeah, it's much, much older thing than 1975. Oh. So 1943, Tikhonov paper was the first paper that analyzed this type of penalties. I see. Okay. Um, and, and my question more about general mm -hmm. um, L0 versus L1. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know that L1 is not good, right? So L1 does the shrinkage, oh. so that's the biggest problem with yes. lots of estimators. Yes. yes. And L0 avoids this problem. Yes. But it seems like it's, it's very hard to analyze those L0 penalties because the quality of the solution, this empirically show, heavily depends on the algorithm that you use. So like your false alarm rate, for example, right? Yeah. If you try to analyze false alarm rate, yeah. you cannot really analyze it based on the formulation of the problem. You really have to take into the, you know, into the consideration which algorithm you use to solve the problem. Yes. So, so, which to me seems like analyzing statistical properties of this estimator becomes a very hard and probably impossible problem in case of L0 uh, formulation. Is that, is that correct assessment? Well, so, so suppose, so if we would like to understand what's going on there, you might, so we can suppose that we can solve the, like a big M formation, the, the, the true L0 known formation. You can start from there, then then you can start the analysis of those statistical properties for this true model. For the later on, right, how to solve this, uh, then it becomes uh, algorithm development. So how good the algorithm is to solve the true model. So it's so different flavor. So if I think I guess if you derive from for given an algorithm and analyze the statistical property for this algorithm, it might might, it might be not possible. Well, in here we, we, we do this. Uh, so we do we do put we do not put the on confident interval, but we can put the confident interval there for the greedy algorithms because uh, this, we prove this, uh, this additive error, so which gives us uh, essentially low bound error bound. Okay. Yeah, but but I, I agree. It depends on algorithms. But if we focus on this true true zero norm there, the, un, the, the original formulation of zero norm there, then everything can be analyzed. There. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying, you never really solve the exact problem, right? Yes. You will always try to find yes. some shortcuts by, you know, to yes. speed up the computations. Yes. And those shortcuts, basically, if you if you analyze the original formulation and you have some statistical properties of the yeah. estimated based on the original formulation, yeah. the numerical solver basically screws up a little bit anyway. Yeah. And how much it screws up is that's that, that part is hard to analyze, right? Yes, this is a, this is, that's why we it's a, talk to talk us a, quite a while to to find out this kind of type bound. So this essentially, if we interpret that as a statistical, I mean, so we can we can do like confident intervals for this kind of method. So it's, oh. yeah. Okay. yeah, this gives us the theoretical results of how good the solution is. Because I know, like for example, Danzig estimator, right? When paper got published, everybody get excited because yeah. they present very nice statistic properties of the Danzig estimator. Yeah. 
And what happened later, people actually started digging into the Lasso estimator. Yes. And they figured out that, well, Lasso estimator actually has almost the same properties as Danzig estimator. And then people say, well, then we'll just keep using Lasso. There's not much of an advantage uh, of using the Danzig estimator. So I'm yeah. saying having this understanding of you know, how it compares to the you know, Lasso, for example, yeah. you know, if the statistical properties are any better than Lasso statistical properties. It's, makes, it's basically a win or lose. Right, that's, yeah. that's what decides whether the algorithm actually, if you know, people put the data analysis will pick it up or not. Yeah, that's a good question. So, so we only numerically, so I don't put the, all the numerical here. So in, we, we can numerically compare that the, the basic selector, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of in here. So it's also, it's also cannot, uh, so numerically we can show the basic selector is not, not, uh, not so essential. It's not working very well. Right. Yeah, not working very well. But but I agree. Theoretically, the but it's a different comparison. Be, because for dancing selector, well, suppose we know the k features. It's hard for dancing selector to even to nail down the k those k features. It's impossible. So so theoretically, it's impossible for us to if we use our form, formula like this way. It's impossible for them to to, uh, to compare like half by half. But those are also synthetic results. Right? So it's, it's synthetic data, right? So yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Synthetic data. Yes. Yeah. So in, in some of the application areas, can you give me a sense of kind of what, what like the housing housing prices? Uh, you know, what would be the typical value of you know, M and P and K, or, mm -hmm. or, or what you know, what would what would be kind of the data source? That I mean, how, how, how to choose K? Well, mean? like what would be, you know, and, and, uh, uh, um, what would be the number of uh, values of, what would be P, what would be P and, and what would be typical values in an application of, uh, you know, if you had a set of housing Okay, data yeah. Data. So these that data, okay, typically, so, that's a good question. So in this, the, the, the causing data, is, in, in Kaggle, they have housing data, data mm -hmm. available. So I guess if I, if I, if I remember quite correctly, the, the number of feet, data points, maybe the 10,000, when you go to 10,000, the feature is, is not that large. I mean, it's only I mean, 100, less than 100. So K would be like 100 or, or P, P, P would be 100. Yes. K maybe 10 is not. Depends on. So, so what do you do for, for this kind of practical case? You, you really need to do cross validation to choose a good K there. Yeah. But the nice thing about this kind of algorithm is, a, is, a, is, a, is a because of, for different K, we have close form, iterative formation. So we can, we can, we, you can run this in one shot and pick out all different cross validation results. Or I find out all different uh, beta values, these features. So you don't need to do this cross validation. You need to solve automation again. Again, here we don't need to do that. And the metrics that you show those are in sample, right? So that's how well you feed the. Yes. Yeah, these are only in samples. Yeah. Because eventually you care about out of sample yes. performance, right? Yes. Uh, you mean the cross validation? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we haven't touched. We haven't touched that. Because, uh, yeah, that's a good point. We are, I think we are trying to do, uh, write another work, most, this is theoretical work. We want to have some empirical, maybe computational work to demonstrate all these kind of features. Yeah, but that's a good point. Good, good point. Okay, uh, let's set the bar speaker here. Yes. Yeah, I'm still just stop the stream. Yeah.